Thank you, Commissioner Velasco. I am going to uh, forego our mission discussion that Commissioner Anderson has started because she's not here. But uh, I will ask for a roll call for attendance, please. Thank you, Commissioner Burtnett. I'll mark you as present. Thank you. Commissioner Velasco? Here. Commissioner Batterson? Here. And Commissioner Clary? Here. And for the record, Commissioner Henderson is absent today. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any discussion regarding the minutes from the June 13th meeting? Yes. Please. Um, under number two, Commissioner Velasco was not here, so she did not do the pledge. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm sure she would have done a good job. But. I did it wherever I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. That is a good point. Did I do it? You did it. Okay. I, uh, I did it. So, so can we reflect? We'll make that correction. Okay. Thank you. Good. Any other discussion? I move to approve. Thank you. Motion has been made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I have two requests for public comment. Is that correct? One from Judy Garrett and one from Virginia Souza. Okay. Uh, I will ask Ms. Garrett to please come forward. Good evening. I'm Judy Garrett, and I'm here representing the Minerva Club. Um, thank you for listening again. I just wanted to report that we are working on the wording for the plaque, and we'll get it to Dennis in August. But I think we're going to need the graphic artist for putting our logo in and everything. But I'll let you know about that. But I'm also here because I'm really, really disappointed in Buena Vista Park's progress, which I see none. And the, the fence has been up, I think, since March. I live on Park, and I walk over there. And there's something odd over there, too, that I have to tell you about. <clears throat> there are four big signs, big, that you have that it will open in invierno in Spanish and winter in English. But the two English signs are on Morrison, and the two Spanish signs are on Pine. It seems to me like there should be an English and Spanish and English and Spanish. Not, <laughs> I thought that was quite odd. Um, I'm just disappointed, as I've said. Um, I just hope there's some kind of a timeline. We are cleaning up over there. Buena Vista Beautifiers are doing it on July 26th, and we're doing all the way around the park, the Adopt-A-Road program with our grabbers and everything. And of course, Minerva has been continuing to do, and I do that one with a couple of ladies next Wednesday, all the way from Cook down to Park and Broadway to Lincoln. And Dottie Lyons, who does Lincoln and Pine, one side of Lincoln, both sides of Pine, and we do all the streets in between, she was very upset yesterday at Minerva because those streets over there were, she kept finding great big canisters and things, which were, it was on July 5th, so we know where those came from, fireworks. And she was a little worried about it, you know, she would use her grabber and some of them had black and brown things that coming out of it and she'd turn them over, but she said, I hope they were not active. So she was concerned and I thought, well, maybe you should know about that concern. I suppose it happens every July 5th. Uh, but we may still find them there, too, uh, when we go next week. So, anyway, we are trying to clean up the old historic area, and we hope it will look good when the park is open, and we hope the park opens in a timely manner. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. Uh, Ms. Souza? Good evening and thank you again for listening. Um, my reason for public comment today is a recent Santa Maria Times article uh, written on the unsuccessful $1 million grant for soccer fields. Uh, the article went on to state that your commission has formed a sports field complex committee last fall to see how, quote, existing parks and school fields could address the immediate need 
of play space, end quote. I'm here this afternoon to ask you not to focus with monocular vision on soccer play fields as commissioners. I'm here to respectfully remind you that $1 million plus is about to be spent on Buena Vista Park. When the community, as represented by 30 members, community members from all the organizations and schools surrounding the park did not request and support a complete demo and renovation of historic Buena Vista Park. After our three years of continuous observation and surveys of over 300 park users and students in the area, Buena Vista Beautifiers recommended and even pleaded with park staff to increase the number of basketball courts, adding to existing courts in space we identified, which is now called undesignated space. We feel the park was too important to the densely populated low-income neighbors to be closed down completely for an extended and expensive renovation. Our team of park playscape designers worked tirelessly one Friday night walking the park, drawing their suggestions, which were presented to Alex Posada. The team consisted of well-qualified experts, Mark Muller from Santa Maria Benita, Judith Del Porto from Hancock, Jeannie Sparks from the Green Team, Ken Huff from SB Can, Heather Weir and her children who were neighbors, and Ken Miles from Campfire. Our plans got lip service and little else. Instead of more courts, we got fewer new basketball courts with three tetherball poles very close to them. Are the kids using these play areas the same age? How will the poles be kept intact with balls? We did not hear the Parks Commission ask staff these questions. In fact, we did not hear many questions regarding this expensive and we are now told over budget project at all from the Commission. As a result of our nearly four years of working hard and enhancing the attributes of historic Buena Vista Park, we still feel like outsiders looking in. I ask you, is this the transparent and inclusive city government we hear touted by our officials? Please, respectfully, take note and be part of encouraging needed, meaningful change in the processes of Santa Maria Recreation and Parks Department. We are the first of what we hope can be many neighborhood committees, volunteering, advising, activating, and thereby helping to create self safe, well-used parks in very densely populated Santa Maria neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Souza, may we have that you just read? Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Excellent. As there are no more uh, requests to speak, we will move forward to our new business and discuss our partnership grant, Allen Hancock College. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to bring this item to you. Uh, over the years, we've been working closely with the community, uh, all different aspects of the community. In this case, tonight you have an item before you for the Allen Hancock College uh, athletic facilities. We've partnered with the college over the years on uh, several projects uh, dating back to resurfacing tennis courts, you know, several years ago. Uh, most recently, uh, Jim Davis worked with the college on uh, the um, uh, athletic track uh, that was installed in the new football field. The college is asking for a partnership uh, grant through the foundation to help them uh, finish up the, the, um, the field project that's right adjacent to the uh, Muscle Senior Center. If you look at the packet, they're asking for $10,000, which is the maximum uh, award for, uh, from our uh, community partnership fund. Mm -hmm. uh, that $10,000 would be used to purchase a new scoreboard. Uh, over at the uh, track and field area. I'm sorry, I was, I was wrong. And that scoreboard would be there uh, available for any community uses that happen. Um, from a department's perspective, you know, our position has been that, that uh, the, the community uh, lost a big benefit when Hancock College's track, the original track, uh, 
was really in, in no condition to be used. Now, uh, with a new track, they've made it available to the community whenever it's not being used for school activities. Uh, a lot of users, a lot of uh, families go out there and walk. I'll see moms in strollers and things out there, you know, taking the laps around the, the field. So we feel that it's an important part of the program. The other component of that from the college's perspective is that it is a football field and so you need to have a scoreboard, you need to have bleachers, you need to have those kinds of things there. So we think we look at this and we support this request from staff's perspective as being just another item that makes a field space available to the community and uh, enhances that experience that not only the Hancock students have but community users of that facility would have. So uh, with that, uh, there are representatives from the college here if they'd like to tell you a little bit about the project. And then um, you can have an open discussion after that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my sensei, Mr. Who would like to talk about it? Hi, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. I'm Kim Ensing. I'm the Athletic Director and Associate Dean of Kinesiology. Um, I have with me Keith Pierce. He's the president of the Allen Hancock College Booster Organization. And Susan is our, I'm going to mess up her title, but she does a great job with college <laughs> advancement. Um, and we've been working together. We work together on this application. You know, like uh, Mr. Posada said, you know, we have had a great partnership with the joint use agreement and the track. Uh, we welcome community members to you know be on the track right now we have a failing scoreboard that was donated to us by Arroyo Grande High School um, it, it's about this big um, and we have an opportunity to hopefully partner with you all to purchase a new scoreboard um, our boosters have been very generous in helping raise most of the money to purchase the scoreboard um, I don't know if you're familiar we have an annual fundraising event called the Joe White event and so the proceeds from previous events have already been deposited towards the purchase. Uh, we have another event coming up this August, and hopefully with this partnership, it will seal the cost to um, finish purchase for the school board. And I welcome questions. Anything? I have a question. Please. Um, just for my knowledge, I'm not really a track and field person, so. In your application, it says community opportunities to use kind of, I know you go and walk or you can have events, but sure. kind of the scoreboard, what kind of events would be possible? So obviously there will be a football infrastructure and also with the scoreboard, you can host track meets that will display results and events from a track meet. You know, so far we've not been able to host a track meet. Um, we have local high schools that uh, Orchid Academy uses our track for practice. Um, I've been approached by VCA. Um, they would like to host a track meet at the college at some point. And, and we'd like to accommodate the local schools as well as host our own track meet. So that scoreboard would help allow that to happen. Thank you. I noticed in the application that you specifically said it would be used uh, for Special Olympics and high schools. Is that meant to be conclusive or is that just representative of? Well, Special Olympics has hosted on our campus before. Sure. I think right now, um, Alex, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think they've moved over to Pioneer High School in recent years. Correct, for their um, track event, yes. Right. So um, we've hosted clinics for Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yes, this would provide an, an extra opportunity to accommodate these requests. But my, my question was more along the lines of, is that a conclusive list or is that just a representative list? In other words, oh. I, I don't know who else might want to, but can you track me? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> I haven't been able to really pursue these requests because it's just... Facilities. Right. Um, you know, right now we're improving our uh, long jump pit to make sure it's in compliance with 3C2A and NCAA standards so that we can have a regulatory uh, event, and which would also help us host. So this is just one piece of the puzzle. I don't know how many other people would approach us. Um, it's hard to say. You had a scoreboard? Is that, Pardon? Was that the end of your sentence? 
You didn't know how many people would approach you if you didn't, if you had a I mean, I no, I don't know how yeah. many other people. Yeah. I know sometimes our track coach, he's also very dialed into local high schools. He used to coach track at Rigetti High School. And so I know sometimes there's an interest to host maybe a CIF meet or, you know, but we've never been able to have that detailed of a conversation yeah. about it. I have another question, more for you. I, I noticed the other partnership grant we had was for last fiscal year, is that correct? So correct. would this um, restart our, th our 30,000 cap or does it roll over and it's just what we have? Uh, no, it's actually, it was a two year budget. So that $30,000 was good for two, two years. years. Okay. So we have, we have 20 left in the fund. Okay. And then my other question was, I know on the other partnership grant, there was a commission agenda report that was included and I didn't see that this time. I don't know if that was on purpose or if it was, uh, like no, was it was, staff. it was handled a little bit differently because okay. it's, it's the college. So we went through just with the application. Okay. The um, comment that I have and you know my question is going to be about soccer uh, <laughs> are we uh, we'll be able to have the home team visitor team soccer kind of thing clock everything works the same so um yes it's it's a challenge to manage our intercollegiate soccer season along with the intercollegiate football season uh, we do have a soccer scoreboard it needs to be installed over on the competition soccer field Okay. And, you know, generally what happens because it's um, natural turf, you know, painting football lines and painting soccer lines during the same week of play is problematic. So if we had a $100,000 grant to make artificial turf, then, <laughs> so, I, you know, that'll, that would be down the road. Or we can put an addendum on this application. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you, yeah, it's it's difficult to host in the same season both intercollegiate soccer and intercollegiate football. Okay, that's honest. And then, so what about community soccer use? If there was, I know that the college you has know, hosted. You um, know, I was approached, I don't know, a month ago about a soccer event in July, and we would have been able to accommodate that um, because it was July. And so that somebody came in and said, sorry, we can't do it in July. We have to do it in August. Well, now it conflicts with our intercollegiate sports season. Sure. So we'd obviously um, entertain per scheduling, you know, events like that. It's just, it's a, it's a well, athletic fields in town are, <laughs> are challenging yes. to come by. And just to clarify, maybe this will help, maybe not. So. Anybody can apply to the college for use of a facility and the Absolutely. college then makes a decision as to whether or not it's available or conflicts or whatever. Correct. So I think that kind of answers your question, Commissioner Burnett, is anybody can apply, it's just a matter of whether the facilities are available. Good. Thank you for Thank that you. clarification. Good. Thank you. Any further questions? No. To do a motion. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the 10,000 grant. Motion made to approve the ten thousand dollar grant. Do I hear a second? I'll go second. Okay. Second is made. All in favor? We'll do a roll call for this oh. one. Thank you, Commissioner Burton. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So we'll start with Commissioner Batterson. Aye. Commissioner Clary. Aye. Commissioner Velasco. Aye. Again, Commissioner Burnett. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Excellent. Well, and thank you for improving our sports facilities in Santa Maria. Okay, we are going to move to number six, old business, and we are going to discuss the Spirit of Santa Maria Award. And I will invite uh, Ms. Hopkins to address us. No, he didn't. I'm sure he said, I'm sure he said Hoskins. Hoskins. Yeah. Hoskins. Hoskins. Like, Hoskins. Hoskins. Good evening. Hoskins. I hope you guys are all doing well. What did I say? Hoskins. Hoskins. Okay. I'm sorry, Hoskins. It's okay. So, Just Commissioner Burnett and I met on July 5th. 
in one of the few applications that we had received for the Spirit of Santa Maria Award. I must say, um, I was a little disappointed. We did not receive more. I received, you know, half a dozen phone calls of people who are interested in turning in applications, but I don't know. They, they just missed the, the deadline, so that was a little disheartening. But we did have two very good applications, and it was decided. Um, by this small but mighty subcommittee <laughs> um, to go ahead and recommend the San Maria Elks Lodge slash Elks Recreation to be the 2017 recipient of this award. Um, Mr. Matt Rodriguez submitted an application outlining just all of the tremendous efforts they've done um, going on 70, well, 2018 will be 75 years of hosting the Elks Rodeo and Parade. And just the year alone, he shared how there were 300 volunteers, they had national TV coverage, they had 144 entries in the parade, just a huge community effort, which would you look at the civic index and the things that we use to judge the Spirit of Santa Maria Award on, they met so many of them and then some. So um, it was my pleasure to recommend the Elks Lodge and the next step would just to begin the entire commission's approval. We run it by city manager's city manager. office. And the only question I did have is when we originally sent the information out, it was for the recipient to be recognized at the council meeting, but I'm also curious as to whether or not you would also like to recognize them at the commission meeting. Since it's now, since All America City Program is overseen by the commission meeting, or the commissioner, so that's something you might want to think about as well. So your thought is that we would recognize them here and then we would recognize them at the city council meeting? I believe it's on the August 1st council meeting, so either one, either before or after, whichever is, works for you. I'm sorry, is this something that one of us would do, like for example, uh, Commissioner Henderson, since she's our Chair. chairperson, she would go to the city council meeting and recommend she that's, can you can yeah th that's those. an option to go ahead and do it that night together so you don't have to have them come to two separate meetings you know kind of be a little redundant but she can definitely do that or any other commissioners can be there sure. yeah sure well i will add to uh ms hoskins uh report uh we were disappointed that there weren't more nominations made but we both felt that the nomination that was made was very strong and we believe that the Elks definitely deserve it based upon our, our historic uh, qualities that we ask and it met all of them. So we were enthusiastic in our recommendation. I was, um, I was, I was impressed by the, right, the nomination. I had just so much detail and I didn't, I just thought, all Alks members were the ones that put on the events, but the number of individuals from our community that help out, I mean, 300 people from the faith-based community, um, youth, um, especially like the parade, all the participants. So definitely think it's a great nomination and a great um, organization to recognize for this award, especially this year, being that there was national coverage. There were so many people at the rodeo from all over the community. It wasn't just, you know, like I said, Alex members. It was all of us because I was there too. And um, <laughs> I think they do a great job and a great service to our community. So I, I applaud that. Great. Any further comment? I think we need a motion. That would be I, nice. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I will entertain a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that the Spirit of Santa Maria award this year goes to Elks number 1538. Ooh, number 15, yeah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, second has been received. Let's have a roll call. Okay, so just for correction purposes or for clarification purposes, it's going to be Santa Maria Elks Lodge 1538 Elks. and the Elks Recreation Foundation. They're two separate entities. You know, obviously one is the parent organization of the other, but thank you. Uh, Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Velasco? Aye. Commissioner Batterson? Aye. And Commissioner Burnett? Aye. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you for putting this together and helping us to make it happen. So the next phase for this will be to forward this on to the city manager's office and then we'll get a date for the council. I 
first meeting in August was the plan. That's, that's Make sure everybody can make it, and uh, we'll talk to Commissioner Henderson when she gets back about her uh, representing the commission, or if any of you want to come and be there. I will be happy either way. Good. I will do it, or if she prefers, then that's great too. Okay. Number seven, informational reports. Okay, so a budget update Dennis is going to have for you, and uh, then we want to talk a little bit about um, the noteworthy report, if you have any questions. I would like a few minutes in the director's report to talk about the new recreation guide and have Dennis talk a little bit about that also, and then also to talk to you a little bit on an update on the uh, arts uh, in lieu program. Okay. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, you have before you the recap report through period 12 or the end of our fiscal year. You'll show that it's 2.91% uh, under budget. That we still have about four to six weeks of wrapping up to do. So we anticipate that to be a little bit less than that, but it'll be really close to the 2% mark for the end of the year. Is that why we have some categories that are over, that are negative because we haven't gotten invoices back or? Uh, the invoices we would be paying on, um, oh, okay. so we'll, this surplus will drop a little bit closer to 2% than, than stay up towards 3%. So uh, no expenses went over in some areas and under in some areas, and, mm -hmm. and that's pretty typical as long as we balance it at the, at the end of the year. I think, Mr. Smitherman, you need to use a little bit of the surplus to buy a calculator because last time I checked, 97.05 subtracted from 100 is 2.95 I, I got that thank you <laughs> <laughs> point four, uh, point zero four, thank you <laughs> point zero. <laughs> okay clearly we all need one because i didn't catch that <laughs> comments Commissions? thank you mr smitherman excellent mr posada so any questions on the noteworthy items that were distributed out? Uh, that was basically last month's recap on things. Mm -hmm. yep. um, the rec staff has been extremely busy over the last uh, month. Uh, you know, they pulled off the 4th of July uh, event. Uh, easily, you know, there was 1,200, 1,500 people in the area that day. Um, the event went off uh, from our perspective, you know, without a hitch. Uh, most things happened on time. Um, the fireworks company was a little bit more um, um, timely in their launches and things, but uh, we did get caught by the fog, uh, so we did have uh, some issues with that. You know, some of the larger shells um, were, um, you know, just basically lit up the clouds. But uh, people weren't disappointed because the uh, uh, surrounding neighborhoods had some pretty good shows themselves. Um, that remained a problem. Uh, fire and police, you know, uh, try to do their their best on their public education campaign, trying to remind people that the illegal fireworks, you know, uh, aren't allowed. Uh, but it's it's like chasing your tail out there when you know you're trying to get from one neighborhood to another. Um, last year, I, I think uh, a better job was uh, was done from a from the perspective that. Uh, uh, more neighbors were calling in for issues going on and there is the ability for a neighbor to actually file the complaint and uh, similar it's called a, um, a the private citizens arrest kind of a thing where they can actually sign a citation and say you know it was this person that was doing the fireworks and those kinds of things yeah. problem with that is a lot of people don't want to do that mm -hmm. you know because they are in the neighborhood so um, you know it, we, we try to get people to understand that they need to be respectful of their neighbors and we did offer signs again that people could put on their front lawn that indicated that they were uh, uh, sensitive to loud noises or that their pets were sensitive to loud noises and we worked with the county uh, animal control uh, animal services department to try to provide um, uh, uh, loaner cages for their animals if you didn't have one you could have your animal that way in their in your home you know, I put my dog in the in the room with the television on, and as loud as it would go, and he kind of hung out there all night. But it that is a problem, you know, and it continues to be a problem. Uh, from the perspective of safe and sane fireworks sales, you know, if you looked around uh, town, uh, a lot of groups are out there. Uh, typically, it's a good fundraiser for them. Mm -hmm. um, based on the reports in the Times and some of the other comments I've heard from police and fire department, there were. There were really no uh, injuries reported related to fireworks, so that's always a good thing. 
our staff did a, a, a bang up job uh, out there or a boom up job I guess that would be what they worked on uh, we had activities for children we had music there was food um, it was a learning lesson because we haven't done an event like that in a while last year's event we worked with a high school and they did a lot of the events on their their side of the property this year we closed off Panther Drive and did most of the events and activities uh, on the street worked great we parked over 400 cars the Grizzly Academy provided the volunteers uh, I believe at five dollars a car they made about two thousand dollars that day uh, for their activities uh, so all in all I, th I think it went well uh, police uh, the Rangers worked. all everybody worked that day all hands on deck for that event and then the pol police provided us with three officers a, a corporal and, and two officers that uh, patrol the crowd and things and things seemed to go off okay uh, so that was a big event for us but that just kind of kicks off stuff uh, concerts in the park are out there you'll sell, you'll see them all on on the uh, schedule of events um, the safe and strong is going on you know again great uh, probably on average of anywhere between 150 and 200 kids at sites wow. uh, getting their lunches at the 11 playgrounds that offer that program so um, yeah it's summer's busy swimming lessons you know everything is just going gangbusters to that end um, I'm gonna ask Dennis to talk a little bit about the rec guide I only have one copy the rec guide is gonna change formats and maybe you can kind of cover that Dennis Hi, we've looked at uh, the different formats that other cities have been using to distribute information about upcoming classes and programs uh, and have actually done a lot of research uh, on our National Rec and Parks Association um, feeds as well as CPRs, California Parks and Rec Society, and got a lot of answers back from different, different cities stating that don't get rid of your, your publication yet. Um, so what we've decided to do uh, is to have a strong online presence using ActiveNet and, and uh, so people are able to go online. It is somewhat mobile friendly uh, to review classes and programs that are coming up and it will only get better as we get better at it. So we've decided to reduce the number of pages from our traditional rec guide to a format that's more similar to a newspaper, folded in half and folded in half. Uh, this will save approximately $12,000 a year in printing cost. Uh, and as we take further reductions this year, it'll be uh, substantial um, savings for us. The other part is that we've expanded our programming so much, we haven't had the ability to market in other ways. And so by saving, uh, we'll be able to utilize some of those, those savings for other, other means in marketing and advertising. This uh, rec guide will be distributed in it's going to be uploaded to our printer by the end of the week, hopefully, and then it'll be distributed in the next couple of weeks via traditional um, post mail. Mail. Excellent. Yeah, we will have a PDF version online, so for those who um, find it a challenge to use class or, or I'm sorry, active, um, can still view it in a traditional format, and we'll have some available at the office as well. We traditionally print about 500 extra copies and um, we'll have those available at the office and the different community centers for those people who are interested in picking those up. I like the back page because it has all the, the community events and then has the map of yes. the facilities. I like that format. One of the things that we talked about uh, several months ago was trying to secure the services of a marketing company and kind of doing, um, taking our marketing to another level and so Dennis has been working on that and the problem is like everything else it's just money uh, you know the proposals were all several thousand dollars to do and so this would allow as Dennis said a little more flexibility in our marketing budget maybe to do maybe not everything that people are talking about but maybe bringing someone in and focus on a particular area in, in marketing events and activities so we'll see how it works it just seems more modern you know i love it it's, it's a good update yeah i just uh, gotta get stronger glasses though so it, it won't really be small. that small uh <laughs> this is this is just our print version in-house and our what our okay, in-house printers could do although it's not going to be substantially bigger but uh, we will we will see some i was going to ask text. if you knew what the point size was going yeah, to be um, i think it's on the front end uh, well it says, it says the so. size of the page but it doesn't say the oh. size of the type 
I want to say it's between eight and ten. So it is still it is still small, but not twelve being average. It's just a little smaller than average. Any questions? Comments? I just got. I don't know if it's marketing wise, but. Similar to the sun, how Play had their insert in the sun, would we be selling inserts for businesses or organizations to send in the recreation guide? It's a potential for revenue? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, just an idea. Great. Before Dennis hangs up his microphone over there. So, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the, um, the Art and Luffy. Uh, yes. Dennis, you want to kind of give a little update as to where we are? Uh, Commissioner Kerry and I had the opportunity to meet with some local developers and representatives. So Dan Blau, Lori Tamura, and uh, business, um, I'm going to draw a blank. Chamber. The Chamber of Commerce CEO, <laughs> Glenn. Glenn Morris was also there and uh, we reviewed the the art master plan, more so the ordinance that has to deal with the percent for art fee. Uh, and had a, quite a discussion and, and they brought up some good points and we, uh, Commissioner Kerry and I talked afterwards uh, and have recommended some edits and have run those to our legal uh, here with the city and they're reviewing them now um, and it looks like we'll, we'll be able to um, work some of those recommendations into the plan. Uh, they, while they were not thrilled with the, the percent period, uh, they were all for public art. So one of the things that's, and I don't know if Dennis has even seen this, but you know, <laughs> an email that I saw that went to my boss was from uh, uh, Mr. Mora and was talking about that they felt that the fee was premature and that it uh, there wasn't enough public input, there wasn't enough uh, um, opportunities for the developers to speak their mind on, on the issue. Uh, one of the things that uh, we have to keep in mind is is that we're not we're not treading new ground here. We are looking at an ordinance that exists in several other communities. Um, we're not looking uh, for a fee that will go to uh, the city's general fund. You know, we're looking for a fee that would help bring art to the community on a community-wide basis. Um, and I think that's some of the things that are being missed here. Uh, one of the important elements that in our job is to make sure that we try to address uh, all aspects of the community. And uh, the art community has been one that uh, the city and the department really haven't done anything with in several years. Uh, now there seems to be a resurgence in the arts uh, locally and, and you know, on a national level. Uh, and I think that what we're trying to do is to provide a funding mechanism that would prospectively start to provide art in the community uh, through the impacts created by new development. Secondarily, and I think this is one of the points that the uh, developers make, is that while well, there hasn't been any art in Santa Maria for all these years, now why? And, and I think that's that's a very valid question, but I also think that you know you need to look at it from what kind of a community are we trying to create? Um, we've made a few minus, modest efforts over the last few years in public art. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the time span, but in the 90s when the public art out here in the courtyard and the public art over at the courthouse and the uh, new county building, those public arts, those were public art, art projects. Uh, and the community was very supportive of the arts. There was a very vibrant arts community back then. It's kind of faded away. Now it's starting to come back. So we're hoping to provide a mechanism for uh, the arts to uh, get a foothold in the community and, and, and bring to Santa Maria the arts that we see in other places. You know, there's really no reason why we shouldn't have similar arts. And this is my editorial comment on it. I, I know that from the perspective of the developer, they don't think they should have to pay the whole ticket. And, and we agree, and I think the ordinance is, is keenly worded enough that it allows for a developer to, within their own project, to create places for art and art in those places so that they're not paying a fee to the city at all, but simply within their project, they've designed it in such a way that, you know, 
there's an element of art uh, considered. And I think many of you travel around the country. I just got back from four days in Austin, and you know, everywhere you go there, there's public art, and uh, they have an art in Luffy in that community, and generates uh, a lot of money for their public arts programs. So, you know, we're, we, we're just trying to bring the city up to speed, I think, to where, where do we need to be. I do know that there's, in, in the email that was sent out today, there was a suggestion that this shouldn't be addressed via an ordinance, that it should be addressed via the growth mitigation program. And I don't know if that was brought up at your meeting, uh, but uh, that is something that could be considered. Um, I have to talk to the city manager and see where he is on that. But at this point in time, we're gonna, we're gonna proceed with the ordinance. Uh, I've not been told otherwise, and that'll go to planning commission on the 19th. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, so if any of you would like to be there and give your opinions on the arts, we certainly would appreciate your support. And uh, Dennis is working with the arts community to make sure they're aware of uh, the, the meeting, and uh, we'll see how it goes with Planning Commission. Well, two comments. I read the Santa Maria Times article, and I, I thought it was actually a good article, and the developer whose name I will not mention, who is not in support of our modest proposal in, in my mind for a, a fee I think was um, appropriate in his his saying his opinion I think he was wrong I think that one of the aspects of the essence of what makes human beings human beings is art and what you said about well if the developer wishes to put art in his or her in that developer's development, then great, we'll, we'll let you do that. I thought that was an excellent idea, but if not, this is what we would like to do for our community as a whole. So I'm, my editorial comment, back to your editorial comment, is I, I think we're doing the right thing. Any other comments from the commissioners? So 6.30, same time, same place right here uh, next Wednesday. Uh, Laura will be back from her trip by then and will also be present. I believe she's going to speak. Um, and if anybody else would like to, um, we will have public comment. Good. Thank you. Thank you for attending that meeting with me, Commissioner. It was um, interesting. It was, it was interesting. That concludes my information. Thank you. Okay, report from the commissioners. I have nothing to report for the last month. Oh, I got stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, besides I had no the meetings. Meetings. <laughs> Okay. Please. Okay. Oh, McCary. the Bob Oreck Park dedication was on June 28th, and it was so great. It could. I was just everybody. It, it was so great. I just can't tell you. It was cute and funny, and just it was an homage to Bob, and it was so well deserved. Um, after, there was an after party lunch at Moxie, which was great too. And Bob was in fine form. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mayor Alice and I did our own park tour one afternoon in her car convertible because she likes that. It was fun. But we, we went around to most of the parks that are doing the safe and strong and checked out the kids program I mean it was so darling some of them were so great some of the parks had hundreds literally at least a hundred kids and some of them you know maybe had 10 or 20 but we happened to be there at a couple of them during lunchtime and it was just it was wonderful to see and I, I actually there's a park by my house Jim May Park and I I, I spoke with with the girl that was is the director and she was upset because the week before there had been 30 kids and that week there were only six and she you know she, she says last week it was so great so um, it's leveled out now in fact I was there today because it's just it's a darling program and they were doing like for the hot weather they were doing duck duck goose with water balloons I mean just <laughs> the cutest things ever I can't even tell you so I've, I've kind of been going and monitoring it well, it, like I said, we went to a lot of them, and they were all different. You know, it depends on the personality of, of the people, but it was they were really great. It was fun to see the programs that are going on. Um, the other thing we did, well, the arts meeting, <laughs> and the other thing was, oh, um, a week ago Friday, 
we did last month we were going to honor the was it the crowd the car club that gave the city money to help with the um play thing the play armstrong. armstrong yeah the play structure and we actually gave them the check on friday night at the oh my gosh i'm sorry what's it called friday, friday night live downtown uh, friday. yeah downtown fridays that's it and it was they were all there and it was like a, it was just we gave them um they made up a big check Teresa made up a huge check and, and it was it was really fun so that's that's what i did this month great thank you <laughs> i have a few committee updates um my and from the downtown revitalis revitalization committee um we're starting to work on our streetscape plan so rfps went out um when we're going to be selecting we're awarding a contract to do um, community outreach for a streetscape plan and so i encourage the commission um and of course you know as a department would like us to be um, a part of that because i think great conversations are going to be had from the community of what they want to see in downtown um, and i think a lot of recreational um, opportunities will be there as well so um, i'll keep you updated on that um, but that should start sometime in the fall and the other thing was from our play meeting that we had yesterday um i have taste of mexico tickets if anybody wants to purchase them um that's going to be august 25th we um, play has moved up the event date it's usually held in september and this year we're moving it up to august 25th um, at the veterans memorial hall it's a great event if you've never been um, you know there's lots of sampling from local mexican restaurants um, there's beer sampling um, and tequila margarita tastings it's a great event for play it's a great um, event for recreation and parks um, for the community to know the work that we're doing um, and so if you can come and you know partake and bring some friends i have tickets again um, and the other thing like alex mentioned the fourth of july event was really well received by the community and um, play is a, a supporter of that and um, everything's just going really well so the only other thing i guess i, I should say is I've had a few, not complaints, but the the reduction of concerts in the parks. So a few people have kind of been like, oh, you know, we really counted on that every Sunday. Um, and now that they're a little more spread out, it's not as often. So I have heard that a few um, from family, friends. Um, and so just thought I'd mention that here. Great. I will talk to you afterwards about the Taste of Mexico. That sounds okay. fun. <laughs> Two things. One was the All America City meeting, which lasted forever, and we struggled to get through. Really, it didn't. And then about the Independence Day, the red, white, and boom fireworks, my take on it was fabulous. I took my four-year-old girl over before everything got started, and I, it looked absolutely fantastic. And the, we started talking to the city rangers, and this is before I introduced myself, and they were friendly, courteous. They gave my little girl these little light things to light up on her scooter. Had a, I thought that was fabulous. And I did hear two particular complaints. One of them from one of my neighbors was had to do with fireworks altogether, and she's going to come to the next city council meeting and recommend that we make fireworks illegal mm -hmm. i think i will come to make sure that we don't <laughs> make them illegal and then the other one was from another neighbor who was uh, put out because there was extra traffic and i thought that i would pass that along and in fact i talked to mr posada about it to do my duty which i do take as a serious duty as a commissioner to pass on uh, complaints that i hear as well but i will say as someone who lives a third of a mile from where the event happened it was 90 percent positive and and very fun so i i was excited about it so thank you uh, one more thing we were asked as a commission to participate or complete 
a sexual harassment prevention for supervisors uh, internet course and I would like to take responsibility to collect any of these certificates that uh, we have and to remind us that they are due on July 19th I believe and I was told that I can give these to you after the meeting yes we'll be happy to take those and if you haven't completed it please try to get online and take care of it yes or if your other duties require you to have them if you have a copy of that certificate you can send that to us too great okay without any other comments I will close our meeting it is Eight minutes to five. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you.